All right, TDS just opened back up with the Solar Eclipse update active. I haven't even logged in yet. So I'm gonna give it you guys my first look and first impressions at this update. I'm super hyped, so let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, they've changed the thumbnail and the title for the game. And after almost seven months, we get a new little update here. So we have the Eclipse event, which actually starts a little bit later tonight. Eclipse season? Ooh, I don't know what that is. I wonder if the lobby's gonna change every few months to make it a new Eclipse season. We've got some Eclipse skins some tower reworks, and some bug fixes, of course. Now, I predicted there'd be 60,000 people playing this update, and what do you know? We got 64,000 right now, and it just opened up about 10 minutes ago. Let's hop in. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see what it looks like. I made a prediction about what this lobby could look like before, so I want to see how close I was. Beautiful new thumbnail. All right, so I can see up here at the top, it says when the next night is going to unlock. We've got the timer for night one going, a little bit less than four hours. Give me a second let my trash pc load the graphics here all right, while I was waiting for my graphics to load, I closed out of that window that explained what the solar eclipse event was, and there is no way for me to get it back. But one thing I did see on it is that I'm pretty sure they called the solar queen the Umbra. All right, so I did just check out the TDS Discord, and sure enough, Razuatix dropped this info in there. It confirms that the main boss's name is not the solar queen, even though that's an amazing name. Her name is the Umbra. Yo, that is so tight. There's the gears I've been obsessing over. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna see in here is the different nights of this event. Night one is easy and it has eight waves. Night two is normal and it's gonna have 12 waves. Night three is considered hard and it's gonna have 15 waves. And finally, night four is also hard and it's gonna have 20 waves. All right, going over here, I can see that we still have this store area. I wonder if it's actually gonna be used for something this time. Over here, we have the hardcore area. Still using elevators? Come on, get with it. The event doesn't even use an elevator. All right, now we have a leaderboard section where the <laughs> leaderboards are still broken like they've been for the past year. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, here's the armory. It looks like it's just here for show. You can't do anything. So I'm going to keep exploring. Now here is an interesting area. It's outdoors. Well, I guess actually the entire lobby is outdoors because there's no ceiling on it. This is really cool that they included these billboards in the lobby because TDS did a contest in their Discord for people to make billboards to be used in the game. So that's a really great way to increase user interaction. They put the winners of that contest in here, and I bet they're going to rotate them out because they had a lot of submissions. Now, look just over the wall there. What do you see? That's right, an actual solar eclipse happening, just like IRL. So this must be the Hall of Champions area. We've got the avatars for all the devs and the contributors, modelers, animators, graphic designers, all of this being guarded by an epic minigunner statue. Oh my god, I am literally getting mobbed here. Can you get a screenshot? No, I'm working, bro. All right, let's go check out the survival area. No way, this tank just drove right through the wall. So here is the hallway where we got the video of Below Natural using the Tomahawk emotes. And it looks like now we've got all the elevators together. This is really, 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 really great. <laughs> because having half the elevators on one side of the lobby and half the elevators on the other side was terrible. This is much more like the lobby that I started playing TDS with because there's two big sets of elevators on either side, which allows you to keep an eye on all the maps. So if you're looking for a specific map, hypothetically, you should be able to find it a lot faster now. So we have eight elevators total for just normal four-player survival and <laughs> just one for Mega. On, don't people use mega servers anymore? I don't know how I feel about that. All these people are gonna try to join me. I'm just gonna jump in the elevators and leave, and they have no idea I'm not even in there anymore. This is interesting because they have different items around the different bosses for the different nights of this event. I think those are gonna kind of signify the theme of that night. Like the first one right here has pumpkins because that's Halloween themed. The second night has mushrooms, which I'm pretty sure go along with the Swamp Thing remake. And that's like forest themed. Hmm, I wonder what theme the night three boss has. These kind of look like barricades here, and there is a little purple tint. I'm pretty sure the color for that night is red, though. And one of the strange things about the night three statue is that there's a regular dude just standing behind it. None of the other statues have that, so I don't know what this has to do with night three. And over here, we have the final boss, and she just has some gears around her. Again, I don't know exactly what role the gears play, but they are gonna be important. Oh, this is pretty cool. It actually tells us when each night is gonna unlock. So it looks like 
like night two unlocks one day after night one. And then night three is going to unlock two days after that. And then night four is going to unlock four days after night three. So they're not all going to come out at once and they're not going to release one night after the other. It's really going to spread out this event so that you can't complete it even in the first week because it's going to take at least a week for the final night to be released. This is hilarious. We've already got people trying to glitch through the wall to find out how to get outside the lobby. Hey, if anyone figures that out, let me know because I'll make a video about it. Oh man, this lobby theme music is really good. It's not quite as relaxing as the Frost Invasion lobby music, but I'm pretty sure that's everything in the new lobby. It's much more compact than the last lobby, which I like. My favorite part has got to be how all the elevators are together again. Even with a lobby that went along with a hardcore update, they were spread out, and I thought that was a huge problem. Now my only complaint is that there's only one mega server. They just don't have any respect for us mega server players. That's gonna make it a lot harder to keep you guys from camping in front of an elevator when I do a live stream. All right, I guess the last thing to look at here is the crate opening room. So let's go ahead and open a basic crate. All right, what you got for me? Blue Scout, no way! Blue Scout OP! Okay, so this looks just like the old crate opening room. And I'm gonna guess it's right underneath our feet. It might even be right here underneath these gears. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I can actually kinda see the battle pass for this event. But I am not gonna be covering that here. I'm gonna be making a separate video right after this one that covers the battle pass exclusively. And then I'll do a separate video from that that goes over the skins in the battle pass. Oh wait, before I go, I should click through these icons and see what's different. So for the store we have the solar eclipse event header and you can click on that and it'll take you into the battle pass uh everything else over here looks normal now if i go into my inventory i'm just gonna scroll through and yeah everything looks pretty much the same what i'm really interested in is this invites button here because this is the future of tds not having to use elevators not having to wait around for a map but being able to go to invites and just straight up invite players from uh, anywhere in the lobby i mean we could stand right here and put together a team. They do have a little note on here that says parties only work for the solar eclipse event and I can't wait until it's available for the entire game. Now I've also heard there's a way to see the different bosses underneath the map but I have not found it yet so I'll keep looking for that and as soon as I figure it out I will let y'all know how to do it. Now the last thing I want to mention in case you didn't notice it is that the DDS servers have been changed from a max of 50 people to 30. So the server size basically got cut in half. I don't think this is really going to have an effect on your games but the bad news is that if if you're trying to play with me, my lobbies are going to fill up a lot faster than they used to, so I apologize in advance. And the very, very, very last thing I want to point out is the scout in my inventory here. Yes, it did get a rework. It looks like that was not the Golden Commander. But on that note, I'm going to end the video so I can go explore, play some games. Be sure to smash that like button with your forehead if you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications however you can so you don't miss any of my amazing upcoming content. I hope you're enjoying this update as much as I am, and I will talk to you later. Peace.